Hey guys, it's Matt. Uh, the storm on Tuesday, that this started on Tuesday, was massive. Uh, my electricity went out for not as long as I thought. The whole rest of the road is still out, even now, um, or at least on, on in one direction. The internet went out pretty quickly on Tuesday, and, and it hasn't been, you know, it just blinks. Um, it's probably going to be another day or two. Comcast is not good. Once the, the, the line's down here completely on the ground. One of the poles cracked through. So I have to take this out somewhere to load it. Um, of course, please no emails unless it's urgent. I just can't do more than 10 minutes or 15 minutes of email a day. And I don't think I'll have internet back till probably Saturday. I mean, it's up here, it's bad. I drove through Exton. It wasn't nearly like it was up here. I, I don't, you know, I don't know. It's strange because we've had, you know, hurric I've been here 22 years, tropical storms, hurricanes, remnants of hurricanes, and this is... This for my road at least as bad as I've seen. So we'll talk about, you know, obviously there's a, there's a Hegelian dialectic with crushed ice of storms going on. Where if you talk about um, primate change and global charming, primate change, if you talk about that for 20 years, uh, you bet you better be able to back it up. Or in other words, I don't think they would have been talking about that for 20 years or more if it wouldn't be backed up um, in a tiny way, naturally, but in a maybe in a bigger way, unnaturally. Uh, we'll talk about that some other time. It just was a strange, a strange storm. Um, I want to talk about the comments in the last video. Violet, if you're listening from a hotel room, I don't think you should listen to this. Um, I think your frequency, your, your resonance, you, you, you need to be um, you need to vibrate yourself out of here in a very positive way. Um, I don't think you should you should continue with this video. I don't think I'm going to be, be that harsh, but it's you, you don't you don't need this. Um, vibrate yourself. In, in, you know what Michael Michael gave you the Reiki music. I mean that's you need to need to stay in that harmony and resonance. So I will be able to check my email uh, if you need anything a little bit later today when I. When I go to upload this, uh, guys, um, some of the some of the um, comments. Oh boy, I did delete some of them. Also, um, I, I don't even know where to start. Uh, first off, let me reiterate, without giving any medical information, um, Violet uh, is in pain, tremendous pain that you can't possibly imagine. Um, it is terminal what she has. So I, she didn't really, she's didn't really tell me exactly how much time she would have left if she didn't do what she's going to do tomorrow and tomorrow. She's in Switzerland now, but I, I get the impression she might only have a month or so. So people outraged at me, um, that in some way, you know, they're obviously against all types of suicide assisted or other words, e other, even in the case of a, of a terminal cancer or a situation of unbearable pain. And then in some way I'm, I'm assisting or in some way I'm responsible. Like, well, no, Violet made this decision on her own. She came to me to help make a video, which I did uh, to explain basically to her friends and family, like who we are, the people that, that see what we see. And um, I asked her a few days ago, I said, do you, she, you know, would you like a, a video where we could talk about, uh, get, but mostly to get your good comments? Um, I didn't realize, well, it wasn't overwhelming, but the people that are um, very against a suicide, a sister, or other, I mean, they're like, I don't know, they're, they're vehement, they're nasty. They, they, it wasn't just, Matt, I would, I'd like to disagree with you here. It was like, there were personal attacks against me. It's like, like I'm some way, like if it wasn't for my channel, she wouldn't be doing what she's doing. It doesn't make any sense. Um, the people that commented, you have no idea what she's going through. Um, and she's terminal, so she should just stick it out and suffer beyond any degree of suffering you possibly can imagine for four or five or six more weeks. So there's going to be a judge somewhere that sees that the pain is unbearable and she's losing certain functions. She tells me it's hard to reply to my emails or it took her 
you know, a half hour to type out whatever. It took her a long time. Or uh, forgetful, a loss of certain function based on her condition. So there's going to be a judge somewhere that says, and somebody actually wrote, took the easy way out. Really? Oh, my God. Um, so, so there's going to be a judge somewhere that says, oh, you you needed to suffer. Um, you know, I don't know what she would go through if she didn't do this. But, you know, I, I don't even want to say some of the some of the things you need to suffer in that manner, like the end of Braveheart. You needed to do that. You would you would have died four or five weeks later, but um, or three weeks later. But you needed to suffer some judge. I, I don't I don't understand where people are coming from. Um, I, I, and it didn't seem like it was, yes, it, it was a certain Christian perspective, a Christian perspective that, but it wasn't just that. So the people that commented, um, like, okay, I, I, as I said, you have no idea what she's going through. So like, what's the extra three or four or five weeks going to do? Somebody emailed me, convince her not to do it, Matt. Convince her just to suffer for three more weeks. Like she could, if she didn't do it, she could just go off to Club Med and hang out. What? She's, uh, I don't get it. I really don't get some of the comments and some of the things I got were literally like insane. Um, so, okay. It's enough said. I just, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Um, let's, let's move on to a different topic. Guys, remember I said, um, our lifeboat off the ship of fools is getting smaller and smaller. Ten years ago, we had this massive community, research community, truth research community, and um, investigating all these different types of events, basically looking at the, the endless fraud presentation together and the fraudulent presentations of what we call not milk are, we all agree. But that community has every year I've talked about it gets more and more segmented and our lifeboat gets smaller and smaller and mostly what I'm talking about is is I guess some of the things that we're deciding to pursue or how we see the world from say 100,000 feet looking down versus a lot of those that we would consider our brothers or our brethren 10 years ago but still wasting their time on the nonsense and somebody screaming at me would say well matt in in this what you're about to you know present you're implying that your lifeboat is the only one or, or or the folks here is the only one that's that's righteous and just the only one that's correct and true well well yeah i'm implying that because what what of course it's if if this is my take i'm, I'm going to think my take's correct i'm not going to say i'm going to make a video say my take's incorrect let's go investigate mall and school events i Okay, yeah, obviously there, there's personal bias because this is my take, <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it's easily proven. I mean, look at every look at the nonsense that people are still spending their time on. I still get nonsense sent to me via email. Look at this event or that or, I mean, I appreciate some of it. I got something the other day that said. The um, what was it called? Um, the the missions. I don't think they're Elon Musk missions. They're not lone scum missions. Artemis, um, Artemis to the moon, um, postponed, postponed. Now I appreciate that. I do. I, you know, I wouldn't have known that on my own. A postponed, the manned, missioned. Oh, what a surprise! Postponed. My email back was um. They just didn't get the CGI right. They already they already have it filmed. They showed it to a first grade class in Skokie, Illinois, and the one of the first graders was like, "There's something wrong with this." They, they one of the first graders didn't believe it, so they got a, they went back to um, Industrial Light Magic or wherever they go. They brought Stanley Kubrick back off the off the island, and they got a reshoot. <laughs> they got to redo the CGI's now. That's why they, you know, one of my one of the craziest theories of all time, that the old guard, every one of the old guard has, has said, yeah, that's right, Matt. They don't allow the top special effects to be in movies like Star Wars because they need the top special effects for the Artemis mission. And see, I don't know why they're, I don't know why they they endlessly postpone and delay and make excuses. Because I believe they do have this perfect um, 
CGI or, or ability to fake reality um, in, in film. And I think that what they can do is look at look at what Dale and the, the, the free shit they give you for free in terms of the Dale and um, Mid Journey and all of these free AI tools, what people can do just in their bedroom. Is it, you know, if you really know these AI tools, you could actually could almost produce like a little mini movie. They have the the Dale and the Mid Journey images now can be animated to a degree. So some dude on an old, not a Commodore 64, but kind of like that can do a movie in his bed, bedroom. Imagine what they have access to. So I don't know. I think, I think, well, I, I, I think I do. Actually, they don't, they're not going to go forth. It's not, I hear somebody yelling at me or wanting to say to me, Matt, it's not about that they don't have the the perfect uh, graphics in terms of, I don't know any other word to describe it, photorealistic graphics in terms of this Artemis mission, where it'll just be the crew of the Artemis in, as uh, Anthony Kiedis and the Red Hat Chili Peppers said, in a Hollywood basement with O.J. Simpson uh, making another appearance after Capricorn 1. It's not just that. They do have that perfectly down. It's that they don't need it. They don't need it right now. They're only going to do something or offer up another uh, another offering, another another hors d'oeuvre to the American populace when they need it. It's almost they know exact. They have talk about having your what is it? Their finger on the pulse. Is that is that the right phrase of through analysis of every tweet? I'll never call it X, other than saying I won't call it X. Every every thumb up, every thumb down, every Facebook post, every email, every bit of it. I mean, you, you guys know this, somebody's yelling Pootie Tang Award, but it's so fascinating. Every, what is it called, terraquats of information? Is it, what's a terraquat, a terraquat, a terra, it, it's analyzing a terraquat of information like a second in terms of it knows where the populace is, it's sentiment. It called, uh, what is it, it called Chris Christie last night. You think you think Chris Christie decided to exit the bogus an artificial race? Uh, no, he was he was called Chris. That's who are you? I, I were, I'm calling from the bad phone. It doesn't matter who I am, Chris Christie. Uh, put your pizza down, Chris. Um, you're out of the race. You're you're going to announce tonight. This was yesterday. I was trying to get the weather report on my little transistor radio. Like it, it's all static. F, how we should talk about that? This and this. How FM and AM still exist is just impossible. Uh, without not wanting them to exist. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to get the weather. Chris Christie announces today. He stepped out. Chris Christie got a phone call. Um, we just got the ticker tape out of the Whopper AI, Chris, and you will announce tonight you're stepping down and no longer in the Republican primary race or whatever. Like, I don't want to step. Chris, you want any more deliveries from Papa John's? You're going to make the announcement tonight. He didn't decide. He didn't decide that. It's all a script. At that level, of course it is. Is there anybody here that really still believes in Trump? Have we weeded all those people out? Every time I've done this, there's like at least one comment. Matt, you're not looking at Trump in the right way. Like, what? What? Oh, my God. Um, if you even run for governor or any lower, I mean, where does it? I, I think once you get down to the House of Representatives, in the United States, then they're all on the not milk frequency. They're all puppets that will do as they're told, but they, they're not in on anything. There's so many buffoons that go in and out of the House of Representatives. Is there like 500 and some of them, or does that include the 100 in the Senate? They're only there two years at a time. Um, anybody that even gets wind of how things really work, they can immediately get rid of because they're, they're always campaigning. They go Two years later, it's just another campaign. So they don't know anything, the House of Representatives, other than the handlers of the House of Representatives, like Nancy Pelosi, um, who told everybody how to vote. And they understand. Yeah, but the, but the House, I mean, they're just a bunch of idiots. Um, so what, at that level and below, you know, but above that, you know, they, people running for, for president, um, I guess, you know, that guy Beto Beto, when you go to Jap Japanese restaurant for lunch, there's a bento box. I called that guy. I don't even, to this day, I don't know his name. Beto box. I called him, not bento box. With it, it comes with sushi. It comes with um, teriyaki chicken or steak. It was, yeah, it was named, it was, yeah, Beto O'Rourke. They wanted him, I think, to be in the race a little bit longer, but he had that, he had that laughing breakdown after the major 
uh, it was a mall event or a school event in Ohio somewhere in his hometown. And as he was telling everybody how upset he was, he started laughing. That'll get you out of the fake race very quickly. And what is he doing today? I wonder where he popped. I don't know. I don't, I don't track it. I don't really care. But um, I couldn't tell you, other than what I heard trying to get a weather report, Chris, I, heard, I had known Chris Christie was back in there uh, playing his puppet role, but I couldn't tell you, I couldn't tell you anybody else that's even running. I think, it'll, you know, Trump, I guess, is, well, it'll be Trump. Biden? Like, I, um, I think, was it, was it Michael that had the theory that they would replace Biden? And they still could be a last minute replacement. He could break, he could do a fake meltdown of some kind. And I think what was Michael was saying, they, they're going to put, they're going to do something with Biden. He, and they'll, like in an emergency measure, they'll put Michelle Obama up. Um, like the Gatorade jingle. Like Mike, I want to be like Mike. <laughs> the Gatorade jingle from um, the or late 80s. Zara. Uh, anyway, uh, guys, um, there's a couple of th- other things I wanted to talk about. And um, let me just check my check my notes here. I'll be back. I can't even see the screens are. You know when you lose electricity and you constantly f- flick on the light switch? I, I, I do this. all, all the, It takes me an hour or two. to, I, And I still go for it, but then I don't flick it on. You just, you know, you just lost electricity and you're, you go into a different room, flick the light. Anyway, I just kind of tried to do that. Um, Juan had sent me, I can't access my email, so I can't show you the picture. So I'll just describe it. Um, excuse me. Juan, I think Juan's, Juan lives in Mexico. Uh, I know he doesn't live in the United States. Juan sent me a lot of good things over the, the years. He watched the video uh, we were talking about Violet situation two days ago. He said just shortly after he went, he went, um, he was standing in line somewhere to, I don't know, like a convenience store. And there's a candy. I think he implied he never even heard of it before, but maybe that wasn't it. He's right in front of him. It said the candy was called violet. It was all, it was the violet color in violet. It was like right there. I don't know if he had never heard of it before. He sent me the picture. It was pretty amazing. I had never heard of a candy like that, but I guess it's not sold in the United States. Guys, let's continue a theme that was brought up in the last uh, video about um, why people cry at, at funerals. And I've been thinking about that a lot recently. And one thing that was floated was that it's not truly because they miss the person as much as in a way they subconsciously realize that what they're looking at will be them. And being in love with the world or of certain types of people here are not the same as we are. We throw terms around like the NPC, etc., or a different type of entity and incarnation. And the question, are, quote, all men created equal? I mean, some would say, you know, this is all they have, um, some types of entities. It makes sense why they're in love with the world. They might not have the way out of here that, you know, that you do or I do or Violet does, or they might not have the bridge out of here. So they're crying, you know, it's simple to say, they're crying just because they're going to miss the person and they had a wonderful relationship. Well, of of the 20 people crying, did really all 20 had a wonderful relationship with that person? Is it just that? No, it's not just that. It's like why people go to the diner and complain about their ailments, you know, older people complaining about their ailments. And about a very small group got very upset (laughs) with me when I floated that out. That's exactly right, by the way, why the older people complain about their ailments, um, because it's a buffer between them and death. Well, it's it's a similar conversation, you know, the the movie or whatever, Death at a Funeral, which was, that was actually, um, was a UK version, I think, before the US version. Um, So there's a couple different things going on. It's just, you know, some people really are going to miss the good and miss the great relationship they had. Okay, they're crying. Okay, that the not milk in the society wants, um, you know, people to see death as a horrible thing and you cry. Of course, it's not joyous. It's nothing to celebrate. But again, some people or whatever, whatever type of entity they are, maybe again, it's just, you know, this is some weird pondering, but deep down, they sense that they're in love with the world. <laughs> they're attached to it. The, the, the world is what they are. The world spawned them. Tony says a whole breed of people here, they're, 
their soul is, is animated by the nature spirit or something here, local. And he doesn't like when I say local, but I don't know any other way to talk about it. Um, they would cry because it's like, oh, that's going to be me. Where, at, where we are, we would say, well, yeah, that's going to be me, the, the death of the body. But yeah, well, so what? Like, I'll, we'll go on and do, do something else. I mean, it's, yeah, Matt, Matt, you're not that casual about death. No, of course I'm not that casual. It's natural to for this experience to even to fear death. It's it's the experience we're having here. It's That's normal and natural. I can't shed what I am uh, in this, in this as, as I'm in the body. It'll get weird uh, cravings from time to time. It'll want to do dumb things. It'll, you know, we're, we're here. We're sharing this experience with, with the body. So I'm... Um, it doesn't want to come to an end. The ego mind doesn't want to come to an end. So yeah, of course it's nobody, anybody that says um, I'm just zero fear whatsoever of death. I've thrown terms like that out, but I've been very honest that you can't completely get rid of it. it it's natural to be a little, a little scared of what's around the corner. It's okay. We don't have to be perfect in that regard, but some people crying, all these people crying around the casket they're like that's going to be me, and I don't want to. I'm the person saying to themselves, "I'm in so, I'm so in love with the world that I don't want to." You know, or it might be the the end of them is a different type of entity potentially that you are. Um, what was the other reason? There was there was, but there was there was another reason that conflicted with that. Both of both are wrong. I mean, both are just not the way to to go about it. But it, it might be another group of me, people that. Um, I guess it's, yeah, it's people more like my father that pretend they're going to live forever, that, that just will never come face to face with the fact that they're going to die. Um, people will be crying, but the, those that are upset at a funeral, there's a, there's, a, there's a segment that, I don't, I'm sorry this isn't coming out properly, I alluded to it in the last video, that they feel that, well, it's really bad what happened to that person they're dead they're no longer of this wonderful world so they maybe they cry and they're sad about that but it doesn't it doesn't apply to them like they've they've partitioned themselves off that like oh it's i'm gonna cry it's really horrible what what happened um to judy over here or or happened to ted or to sam but a, a lot of these people they don't they will they won't allow themselves to they're like but i'm okay I'm, this isn't coming out right. I'm, I apologize. But like I'm okay, you know, and it, and like it's it's sad that though this this poor person had to leave this earth, but I'm good and I'm gonna live forever. It's like they're trying to create a um, a wall uh, between themselves and the person at the funeral. And this is uh, you know this is hard to talk about. I was, I'm sorry, guys, but in that case, they truly could be sad that the person left the wonderful world. But they, it will not apply to them. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, th that's I guess uh, better than the first option. Both options are wrong. Um, I've tried to talk to my father a few times about just because, not that you know he's getting uh, sickly or anything or is about to die, but just in terms of it, it's a conversation I'd like to have with anybody. It's like I like talking about it with you guys now. And oh, he just does not want to want to go there. He he makes plans like he'll be around forever. Not not, but on paper he'll say, "Oh, I know that you know the chances of me living past ninety are very very low." He'll say that, but he doesn't believe it. He doesn't act like it in his actions or the way he lives his life or the way he even alludes to certain things. Um, I, I don't want to. You know, sometimes family members. I don't want any family or friends watching this channel because I feel like I have to walk on eggshells in terms of what can be said. I doubt he'll, he's watching this, but he, he does. There's more people that know about this channel now, put it that way. So he bought a um, a new car recently. He bought a Mazda, one of those midsize SUVs, M Mazda, which in Canada, it's called M Mazda. I, I first... Time I went to Montreal, I turned the television on the hotel room, and come on, get the Mazda, Mazda 60. What the hell is he? Mazda? That's what they, that, it wasn't a mispronunciation in the commercial. That's the way they call it in Canada. It's strange. But he said to me, you might get this. He's 82 or 3. You might get this. You. I hope you like the color and everything. You might get this car someday. I went, what? 
people, because of the ridiculous prices, people are keeping cars now 10, 12 years. I might get the car someday. So, you know, might. So that would be 83, 93, 95, 90, 96. You're 96 and it's 50, 50. You might still need the car. I don't know. It's just the way he, he put it. He's acknowledging that at some day he will die, but the chances are small. You know, it's like it's one of those things where, you know, I, I I believe it's much healthier to be just the opposite where and I truly believe this. Violet, um, what's happening um, with you tomorrow? Uh, we wish you the best. Vibrate out of here. And do what you need to do. But we'll, we'll see in five minutes, basically. You know, that, again, that story I told about Russ, my dad's friend. Said, you want me to do all these medical procedures and do this or that for, for what? Russ in his early 70s is like, it, the next Christmas will come, next Christmas, all of a sudden I'll turn around, I'm 80, 85, and we'll be out of here. Like in a blink, boom, done, we're out. And he, he said that, you know, and now and then it's been 15 or 12 years, well, it's been just over 10 years since his death. It might be 12. So that seems, when, he, when I heard him talking like that, or what my dad told me he said, that seems like a few seconds ago. So again, it, from the perspective of any real entity out of here, there is no time Um you, you probably went in and out in, a, in an instant, instantaneously, not even in a, I probably would go in and out. Violet, uh, you know, uh, she has her assisted suicide tomorrow. And I when I said just a joke saying, well, I'll see you in five minutes. We'll see you in instantly. We'll see you in five milliseconds. It's it's no difference. The Star Trek episode, um, I don't know if you want to call it a truth. It's a truth drop where the producers or the writers of the episode uh, maybe didn't know they were giving a truth drop. To me, it's the way I interpret it, it's a gigantic truth drop where I forget, is it Inner Light? Is that the name of the episode? It doesn't matter. You just look it up. Star Trek, Picard, the next generation. He's uh, Picard uh, goes unconscious. You would type in for 15 minutes and experiences a whole lifetime on a on a foreign dying planet. It's this probe that puts a lifetime of experience into Picard, he, he absorbs 50 year lifetime where he has a wife and kids and all different things he never got to experience as the captain of the Enterprise, he takes it all in. And when he wakes up, oh, he says it all makes sense, right? That's the most, that's the simplest and probably most accurate definition of death. It'll, when you wake up in the morning from a dream, it, you just, you got to go get counseling or it just makes sense. You just go get some eggs or something. It'll just make sense. It's, it's that simple. And Picard woke, oh, there's Riker. Oh, I, I, it makes sense. And they said, well, what was that whole lifetime I just lived? They said, yeah, there was a probe, Captain Picard, that beamed something into your brain. You didn't really, well, didn't, he, you, she, the, Deanna Troy or the counselor or the doctor uh, says, uh, you know, you didn't really experience that, but really? How do you, what, what is real? Like Morpheus says in The Matrix, it was his 50 years on this dying planet. They were, running out of rain and, and they couldn't uh, keep their crops alive. And it is a tremendous, it's slow episode, but it's just great. It really is uh, it's better than any movie that's was made um, in the last 10 or 12, 15 years. I mean, a whole episode, Star Trek, the next generation with the Borg, those two episodes or three episodes, if you count the first one with the Borg encounter with the Q better than any movie made in this century. Um, he, he says, Oh, it was the probe. But was it real or not? I mean, what is real, right? Was, so he even learned to play a little flute. And the, the greatest closing of episode of an episode, um, he goes and the flute is there because it was in the probe. The way they put the um, the Chuck Berry albums in the V'ger, didn't they put? Don't they put the Chuck Berry albums in the V'ger or something? If something comes across the V'ger, Voyager one and two. What do you think I was talking about? Some alien ET comes across the Voyager. Which where is it, Tony? It's um a billion and a half miles away now with its dish exactly in the right position. Oh, it's getting a software update too. That's right. It's getting a software update. But the ET, um, Elliot, it will come across the Voyager one and two, and inside they have remember they have a the, the Vitruvian Man, and they have I think they have a Chuck Berry record. So the the ETs can can get down to I don't know who they put in there, Elvis maybe. But um, that's what this probe did to Picard. In other words, they they beamed, they downloaded, the Elon Musk, Ray Kurzweil downloaded into Captain Picard's brain, and then the flute was in there. 
so we oh the flute was it real or not and of course just a 15 minute uh, unconscious on the bridge of the enterprise but a whole lifetime lived he of course he can play the flute perfectly at the end what a what an episode what a series i mean i know you know it's that's that's sci-fi stuff's not for everybody but my goodness i mean how many to bang out hundreds and hundreds of episodes where 60 percent were pretty darn good and about 15 episodes are better than any movie made in the century. Matt, stop, re- stop bowing down before Star Trek and move on. I've got things to do. Sorry. Um, so why people cry at a funeral? Let me tell you what. It's not, there's a lot of things going on and not, the, the simple explanation is not always, uh, usually not, not the case with most people. I talked to Pam about it once, and it, Matt, they just will miss the person. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's that's right. It's that simple. Yeah, that's why the old people complain about their ailments. Matt, we're just, you know, it's not a buffer for death, Matt. It's not always a conspiracy. You're right. I'll just, I'll just shut the channel down right now. Let's continue a theme that, well, we've been talking about here for many, many years, but I've seen it pop up recently on some larger channels. I know there was a segment of a really graceful video that talked about like the impermanence of how these homes are built and now they won't last. And it's the whole theme of the reality. Impermanence, is that a word? But um, there's something that happened to me personally that goes along with this theme. It's not the greatest, most exciting example, but I definitely wanted to talk about it. I'll keep it to a minimum before we talk about something else. So of course, if you go down to Abington, Pennsylvania, which is next to North Philadelphia, Really not a good area. Don't you? You better hope your car don't break down in North Philadelphia. Because can I get some help here? It's like that scene in St. Louis, but much worse in in Vacation. Saying, "Yeah, man, there's a guy named Charlie up there. You have to ask him for the it, it don't break down. But Abington and Cheltenham are nice, pretty darn nice communities. Cheltenham High School is actually where BB, our friend BB, BB Benjamin Netanyahu bought, went to Cheltenham High School for a few years. And well, I know Abington because we used to have to go through it. My mother used to be uh, do secretarial work in Jakintown. Anyway, the point is, Matt, get to it. The homes down there are just, you know, you don't see this in, in most of the country anymore. Old stone homes. There's many communities, hundreds and hundreds of certain roads. Not, not like stone veneer and this horse shit. Horse shit. It's real large stone. They'll last, it'll last like a castle. The not elk doesn't doesn't isn't down with this anymore. It all has to be impermanent. It's horse shit. You put your you put your cheap ass studs up. You put your bullshit your bu- your bullshit concrete. You put your it's not even two by fours. It's one by three studs or whatever. They're already rotted when you put them up. And then you wrap your Tyvek Tyvek home wrap. You've everybody seen that driving on the highway. Tyvek home wrap. They got a damn monopoly on home wrap. Why doesn't the the trust busters do something about that? There shouldn't be one company that supplies all the home wrap in all of North America. That's anti-competitive. And then they put their vinyl siding bullshit on top. And then, look, I mean, and then they pump in their foam insulation. So it's like, well, how did, what if you have a problem with the light socket? I never figured that out. They pump, you, you know, they've seen these ads. They pump their foam insulation through the wall. What if I have a problem with the wiring? You got to rip the damn foam out. It's, anyway, so there's a few areas around here that are built with permanence, but that's, of course, um, that will, it's gone away forever. It's a not milk trend and tactic. It has nothing to do with somebody screaming at me, building material costs. No, uh, actually bricks, this is the example I'm going to give you before we move on. Bricks are one of the few building materials that's actually still affordable. It's a, right, one of the bricks I was looking at is a dollar thirty to a dollar forty a brick or a paver. That's not bad. When four by eight sheet of plywood, Three quarter inch exterior four by eight sheet of plywood, forty five to just over fifty dollars for a sh- Greg and I. Do, we talk about this all the time. In the late seventies, you could get exterior plywood for seven dollars a sheet, eight dollars a sheet. It's not just inflation; it was way below inflation. So anyway, guys. So my personal example is is this. I watch the damn stove videos. I watch these Russians build build the stoves and they have all these different options for bricks so i figured why don't i would have the same there's a lot of brick buildings all over i have the same options i never really thought about it well the here's the point and this is not accurate but it gives you the point of where this is going and i gotta wrap this up this isn't that exciting to a lot of people 
basically you can't get brick now that's not accurate you can still get brick but that's kind of where i'm where i'm going here the options i was like where are all my options these damn russians have they have this beautiful black brick a brown brick a big brick a small brick a they, a brick that matches up exactly with their fire brick or the refractory bricks so they fit together they have this where are my options i like I went to Lowe's and Home Depot. Was this this horse shit crap? They were each you could say they were fired so bad. They they had little bends and twists. They didn't go together at all. It was just I mean they, they sell for eighty cents a brick or whatever. They're absolute crap at Lowe's and Home Depot. So okay, let me if you want to build a doghouse, that's great. But anything else, it ain't gonna work. Where are all these brickyards? So I look all these. I remember going with my grandfather, my father. The brickyards used to be all over the place. Late 70s, 80s, early 90s, they would sell concrete block, cinder block, but all different types of brick. Well, it doesn't exist anymore. The Fizano brothers here, look, where's all your brick? Well, we have two different types of pavers and two different types of brick for this whole yard. That's all we have. Nobody buys it. Well, because it's not milk. It's transitioned to shit materials that, that don't last. Home won't last more than 30 or 40 years before it completely starts to fall apart. So... Of all the options I thought I had available, literally in terms of making these stoves, if I don't want to use all refractory brick, which it's ugly, it's it's there's a lot of reasons you you just want your firebox to be refractory brick, um, not the whole darn thing. I have two options, two options. There's a company that makes a four by eight paver that fits together, means it's twice wide is the same as one length. That's what I need. Two options. Um, well, there's one other option that's meant to look old. It doesn't work for me because the corners are shaved off. So of all this, all this brick, all over, three possibilities. And somebody's screaming at me saying, Matt, you know, 10 years from now, you better buy that brick up now, you son of a bitch. It, it'll all be gone. It'll not, it won't allow any materials at all, even for doghouse construction. That's, that is uh, not of an impermanent nature so yeah but as soon as i can guys i am going to go for whatever reason i'm going to get another two to three hundred bricks even if i don't ever use them in a stove or store them by the way when i i've got i'm working on last last minute guys i'm working on a type of mortar a sand and clay mix uh with with some additives where you can build the stove it'll work for well i'm not even going to fire these things much but then when you break it down, you just scrape the mortar off. It's not going to break your brick apart. I know three parts sand to one part clay does that now, but I three parts sand to one part clay, which is used to make these stoves a lot. It just does, there's no rigidity at all. I, don't, I just don't like it. I want to. I'm trying to add maybe some a little bit of Portland cement or some lime, and I'll I'll share with you what I what I came up with. Even wood ash, you can you can add. But um, yeah, of all this brick and all this, you know, all these options that you know, the Russians still have all these options. I got two options. And Matt, you better buy that shit up quick. <laughs> It'll be gone. You can go, you, you'll go to one of these yards. I want to make one of these gigantic stoves or an outdoor fire pit. Somebody, they'll be trying to sell me vinyl siding for that. Or we have a high heat vinyl siding, sir, you might be interested in. What? So you want my fire pit to look like a Lennar or Toll Brothers home? That doesn't make for a good backyard picnic sorry uh let's let's uh matt it's breaking down it's breaking down let's move on to something else all right let's talk a little bit more about the storm stuff and the hegelian dialectic with crushed ice um i alluded to earlier it's pretty clear when the the term or the phrase or the idea to put in people's head about primate change and global charming you know what i mean in terms of every place that's been floated, and I don't mean like little TV shows and movies and the the uh, Dennis Quaid, uh, the day after tomorrow where these giant storms were created because the Earth's temperature went up a few. I'm talking about every single time it's been mentioned in an article or a, a weather person has alluded to it. It's in the tens of millions of times the media has implanted that idea into the populace. And if you include newspaper articles and, and internet articles, it could be hundreds of millions of times, at least a line about global charming and primate ch change. If, is there anybody that doesn't know what I'm talking about? Even, I mean, some people are like, Matt, the, if this hobo code gets any worse, you'll turn people off. Well, is it, did I just come in here, start doing hobo code for no reason? Is I just like the sound of the word primate? 
I have to do this. I mean, I don't, it's not just because of the banner ad. I mean, sometimes because of the banner ad, you know, I don't get many banner ads because of this, but when you put it out a hundred million times, oh, you better, like I said earlier, you better back it up. You better, they wouldn't have put it out a hundred million times unless they're, uh, they're, they have the ability in some way to back it up. But Matt, I know where you're going with this. You're, you're going to talk about, um, tales of tales of chemicals you're going to talk about um harp or a, a mechanism or a technology and matt make sure you keep the other thing on the table and that's the most the Kabbalion thing on the table well that's demonic oh okay, i'm sorry i won't mention that anymore we'll just talk about the ideas we won't mention the Kabbalion itself um all is mind right so you put out that matt there is no technology there is no mechanism there is no processes there is, the, the tales of chemicals, even that is all is mind. You get a hundreds of millions of real people, how many ever real people there are that uh, interact with the NPCs. You get them to believe that this is inevitable or it's here. Primate change, it's here. Al Gore's worst nightmare is here. Then everybody believes it and see then the weather changes. They understand how reality works. Could it be that simple? Yes, absolutely. It could be that simple. Somebody, a little channel that I really, boy, I, I have no idea the name. You won't know it based on what I'm about to tell you. Just a big thinker this person was. And I I don't, haven't seen him. I, I, you know, maybe just went away. Said, came out and said, you know, the the tales of the, the plane, the plane, the plane, the tales of chemical, the, the long hundred mile. He said, there's nothing. He says, it's nothing. He wasn't as confident as what I'm presenting. He was like, "That's it's just to get you to think that's what it is. Or, or And there's something, well, we'll, we'll talk about that in, in a minute or two, if, if I remember, because I'm not, I'm not that prepared. I'm going to just go around in circles on that issue, unless I stop to think about the way I want to present that. But he's like, it's nothing. He goes, but that goes along with what I'm saying. It, maybe it is nothing, but then this whole group of people in real generative beings in our community, but which if everyone here is not equal, there's higher percentage of real people in our community that see through this reality. Of course, be, if all men are created equal or not, or whatever it may be, or not, then the, the high, higher percentage of real people would be here in our community that see the world as some, something wrong with it. So to get these generative beings to believe this is happening, then it starts happening. To get everybody in the world to believe that primate change, it's all inevitable, and then they don't have math. They don't need no technology. They don't need no harp. The real people believing in it will actually create it. Um, I, you know, do I know that's how it works? No, but is that possible? Is that generally how I think the reality works? Yes, I do. Um, it goes back to the first notion I ever had uh, on this was, well, not the first, but the first real concrete example and I've told this to you a few times, guys. It's it's one of my favorite examples of all time. That villainous fraud, Ray Kurzweil, was giving that speech going around. Was about this was about eight, eight or nine years ago, uh, giving a speech about not as much about the down downloading consciousness into a computer, it was more about the brain chip and how it's coming and it's inevitable. And I watched. Um, you, you guys heard me talk about this, so I'll be brief. Four or five of his speeches, and all four or five of his speeches were like the same type of canned presentation said in the same way. And when he would get questions from the audience, he was answering them in the same way. And he it was like canned responses. So the point is, if you're supposed to be the top, his, his title was futurist, top futurist for Google, making your five to ten million dollars a year not including stock options if you're the top mind do you have to give a canned presentation in other words i don't know much about russian stoves compared to uh, igor and vladimir over there but compared to with a thousand hours i put in compared to people in because i already knew a lot about fireplace construction stove and all that anyway so compared to what people know here i i am like an expert so i don't i don't would need to give no canned presentation i could just go talk about how the difference between the the, the finish oven of the counter flow differs from some of the russian designs i could just talk about it i wouldn't have to be i wouldn't have to pull out notes 
So I'm like this guy Ray Kurzweil. He's he's this guy's this is not real. He's he's giving a canned presentation. He doesn't know that much about it. And I was thinking, well, there's only one reason for this: to get the audience to believe that it's coming, the brain chip is coming, to facilitate that into reality. That's the notion of the screen or the knot nook or the outer ring of reality floats that blurry image. And real people harden it up or the cement is wet. Real people are the emulsifier. And I was like, that's what this Ray Kurzweil is doing. And I think that's similar to what the the D-Wave with Jordy Rose. I don't know, you know, I showed you that video where IBM says they have the new quantum qubit, qubert, whatever they have now for the IBM the, I just call it BM. I just get rid of the I. It, 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 maybe that's it's, it's Matt. It's it's a it's damn mockery. B, bowel movement. BM I BM. It's a damn mockery. And then Hal H A L, which is one letter up. Uh, it's one letter before. Sorry H I Hal nine thousand and I B M one letter below Hal I B M um, Bueller v, blank ec, ec, and, voodoo so it, yeah it's probably a mockery but anyway whatever when jordy rose was making that presentation now when when we we were fooled back in the day as as truth researchers of course um when i'm not arrogant to say we're, we're not we're still fooled but we know we're much better now of course um, we need to do better but um we were very fooled back in the old days of just the mall events and the school events and Jor- jordy rose we believed every bit of it when he said that his D wave went into communicated in some way with another dimension to get the answer. And we, we then, we just said, we believed what he was saying, but it's then it's demonic or it's a, it's gray alien reptilian technology, or it was dark and we were, we were right to identify it as dark, but it was, um, it, we now see it, or I, at least now it, it was fake. It was not. Now that doesn't mean they don't have a quantum computer today, but when Jordy Rose, that's why I started, remember, I started calling it nothing more than a snow cone machine. You go around the back of the D-Wave, it's a cherry, grape, grape vanilla, and there's a big thing of ice, and you get your little little paper cones. It, it, around the back, it's probably a snow cone machine. I think it was fake when he was saying, I don't think there was any sort of thing called a quantum computer. But, and if, it, if there was, it didn't go into another dimension or communicate with another dimension, as he said. And then he did the same thing. He went and he gave his little speeches. It wasn't just that TED talk. You could find Jordy Rose talking about D-Wave to different audiences. And does that make any sense to you? If you have, if you are working for a, a company called D-Wave, and the, at the time, I mean, we we know now. Well, let's not get let me get ahead of myself. If you're the cutting edge technology of a real thing ten years ago called a D-Wave quantum computer, and this is your owner then why do you have to go give speeches about it? it? It's going to be better than, you know, whatever you created, right, is going to be thousands of times. Now, I can't I can't unplug this. Like, it's going to be, like, this is a regular computer. It's going to be thousands of times better than this, or even if this represents like a Cray supercomputer. So why not just let the results speak for themselves? go to business and industry and say, we can save you money here. Go to Hollywood. We can do graphics that are hundreds of times. Let it, it, it speaks for itself. If you have a computer that can outperform anything else, why do you have to go give lectures about it? Why are you talking about it, Kansi? Why are you going into the middle schools and, and telling people about it? Because it didn't exist. And in a way, it, it needs the real creative beings or the generative beings to believe that it's here. And some way that facilitates the creepy reality that now did Matt, maybe it exists today and all those people believing in it and all those people that wasted their money at the Ted talk, maybe it exists because real people believed in it. I, I don't know. I mean, we, you know, it just, it's just wild speculation at this point, but it's not just what happened with Ray Kurzweil. I've seen them like the Jordy Rose, um, they they give these speeches and they will tell you something's coming, and I'm very convinced it's it's to get real people to believe that it's here, and somehow that facilitates it into reality. Is it a whole lot different than what they did with Bruce? Remember I remember I showed the award that was given, and by the way the 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 white dress was beautiful. I brought it. It was beautiful. 
it brought a tear to my eye. What they did that with him. They said this is this is normal now. They, and it, that's a different. Okay, it's not bringing in a reality or quantum or in a way it is, but it's it's different. But they did that. He didn't want to be. Uh, I I was going to say I guarantee, but how would I know it? He in, I'm pretty sure he never wanted to be. Okay, how do you talk about this? Or how do you talk about this in a certain codes? So the video loads. I guess just talk about it, man. It's not as bad as you say. He never wanted to be a woman. Okay. He was approached. He was given, maybe he was given an offer, a, a, a five families offer. He couldn't refuse. I'm going to give you an offer. You can't refuse. He was approached at Bruce. Look, you know, the, we, we've done this before. It's fun to do. Here, here's what, you're, you don't have any fame anymore. You know, we can do this whole thing with the, with the Jenners and the Kardashians and Make all your billionaires, they say Kim is, is a billionaire or close to a billionaire. And we can do this for you and that. And you, we can bring your family to prominence and fame and billions of dollars flying around in TV shows. And you've just been sitting here crying over your decathlon medals, doing nothing, doing nothing for 35, 40 years. Here, what do I have to do? He said, this is pretty much the way it went down. Are you, oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay, he, didn't, he doesn't want to be a woman, guys. He, he never had to be. He said, okay, you, you're going to go before the public that you are now this. Um, do, you, do I need to? No, you don't need to. You, you, will, you do need to do, when before your public appearances, so the voice, you do, do need to do six to eight weeks of a, a cycle, like a stero, steroiders do a cycle before Mr. Olympia, a hormone cycle, bot steroids, a hormone cycle. So then you do your... your um, 60 minutes interview, your Diane Sawyer famous interview, you need to sound a little bit more like, and the, you know, the cheeks glow a little red, like, like Arnold Schwarzenegger in junior. So, you know, so, okay. I pretend I'm this. I tell people I'm this. I have to do this little six, eight week hormone cycles before my public appearances. And, um, that's it. And what, that's it. I don't have to, I can still date women. I can still, yeah. We can, we'll take you away from the cameras for six months. You'll re revert back. We'll, we'll just give you the testosterone that Mr. Olympia gets. We'll revert you back. And that's all. You, billions of dollars would fly around my family. Uh, Chloe Jenner, <laughs> Kim, Kim Kardashian, Chloe Kardashian, whatever these frauds are. Um, yeah. Now, he didn't have, that's not so bad. For, for Would you do it and I do it? No, but I'm saying you didn't. he didn't go through what people think. I mean, it's just, yes, it's humiliation and all that. But it's so clear, guys. He he never wanted to. I mean, maybe he was given an offer he can't refuse. But but Matt White put it like Don Corleone. He anybody that's of that of that type of person would would do it for the billions and the fame and fortune. It's not like that he had to be threatened or anything. Although there was that weird incident where he was didn't he? There was a vehicle, a, ve a bought a ve ve vehicle, vehicular homicide. Well, he was involved in and that's all part of it uh, who knows what part of the creepy ritual that was or the who knows who knows but uh that's that was i mean there, it's just sniffed of um of some sort of ritual that was attached to whatever he was doing for the knot milk at that time so um i'm sure guys like pootie tang award i know you're not i'm not telling you anything everybody here knows that you know he's a it's a puppet. He didn't want to do that. And it's just fun to talk about. It's fascinating. It really is. I mean, this would be, if my friends or family or people saw this, they would, they believe every bit that he's a man uh, who, who's always known he was a woman and what he did truly was courageous. And my friends and family would believe he probably did Although they don't like the ESPYs and the SP Awards and the ESPN Awards going there, they would say it probably should just be for football and baseball players. But, you know, they appreciate what happened on that. They're all fooled by it. As usual, we're the only ones uh, who can see through this horse shit. And I'm trying to think, is there anything else that I want to mention? I'm going to try to talk about as much as I can because I don't, tomorrow, guys, I don't, you know, if the, if the internet's still down, I don't know if I can, hopefully it'll be back for Saturday. Maybe I'll start working on Although I can't get on the internet to, to look at, to get any images or anything. Maybe I can start working on Saturdays because I still have the electricity and I still have the, the Mac. Of course, I just don't have the internet. 
And I've caught myself a lot recently, but I'm doing much better with, say, on the phone to uh, whatever family member I'm talking to and say, oh, my electricity's down. Or did you lose never power? Did you lose your power? No, 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 no. That is a not milk word game. Never, I'm, I'm just out of it now where I never, I, I, I catch myself a few times, but I almost always lead with now. I lost my electricity for five hours. Never, I lost my power. Um, it took me a while to get through that, but um, all right, guys. If if there's nothing, I'm not sure there'll be anything else. I'm gonna I'm gonna check. Um, if, if if you know, if if the internet comes back, definitely tomorrow Friday. Uh, but um, and I certainly want you know I want my email up uh, for Violet. But um, if not, it'll be it'll be Saturday.